What's going on everyone? It's Javon from Rebrand Creative and today I'm going to teach you how to take this basic generic Nike logo and turn it into this. Stay tuned. All right, so we're going to start with a blank canvas. We have our Nike logo um, in the layers panel, but it's hidden right now. We'll use that a little later. So now we're going to pick three colors to make this cool gradient. So I'm going to use purple, pink, and the yellow. So now we're going to start with the pink color first. Oops, hold on. We create a layer first. Always create your layers. That's the only way it's going to work and have them visible. So create a layer above, have it visible, and drop the color. Secondly, we're going to go with the yellow. Actually, let's go with the purple. Throw the purple in there. Your purple. And then you want to throw that yellow in there and see if we just throw a yellow and see what happens. All right, cool. So now we have our three colors. We have our yellow, purple, and our pink. So now we want to make a gradient design or a gradient effect. So we're going to take uh, our Gaussian blur and the goal of it is to get these three colors to blend together, get rid of the hard edges. So we're going to go to between 60 and 70% on the percentage scale. Uh, a good rule of thumb is between yeah, 60 and 70. I would go 75, but that all depends on the colors that you're using. Um, as long as you like the way the blend kind of works together, pick whatever percentage you want. Cool. So now that we have our gradient, now we're gonna apply some cool effects. That's where the magic takes place. So you have all these properties. Um, you have your edge, push, twirl, left roll right pinch expand etc um and this is all in the liquify toolkit so what we're going to do is we're going to use our edge first to kind of like play around manipulate these colors make them look whatever however do whatever you want there's no there's no right or wrong way to do this kind of balance those colors out i know that purple is getting missing in the in the mix but I think once we do our twirl, it will bring all that together. So now we're going to do twirl left and right. So now you see those colors starting to blend and create this cool marble effect. And the goal here is to kind of get a, a solid balance with all three colors. I know it's going to be hard to do that when you're working so freely. Um, but make sure that you're intentional about adding color and where you want them and, and so on and so forth. Like the yellow seems to be very prominent, so let's try to push some more of this purples in there to kind of separate that yellow a bit. Try to balance it out some. All right, cool. I feel like that will work. That's a solid gradient, sol solid marble texture that we can go with. So now that's done, we can go ahead and apply a clipping mask. So what a clipping mask does, it just hides behind the graphic that it's beneath. So we have our Nike logo, which is essentially below um, this nice gradient. So when we apply that clipping mask, it's just gonna apply within any part of the graphic below it or above it in a sense. So we're gonna go layers, clipping mask, and now the Nike logo is shown and the clipping mask is living within that graphic. That's what the clipping mask is for. Cool, now that we have our, our design within our logo, we wanna then duplicate the Nike logo. Now, when you duplicate the logo, uh, when you duplicate the, the black logo, it doesn't necessarily change. It's just duplicating that. The clipping mask doesn't affect the actual graphic. So I can still manipulate that however I want to. So by adding that second layer, that second Nike graphic, I can then pull it. Actually, we don't want to do that one. Pull the bottom one. I pulled the top one. So I want to pull the bottom one out. Oops, okay. All right, now we're good. So we're gonna pull that bottom graphic out. Boom. See, now it gives it some dimension. It says, 
you don't want to have a flat design. You kind of want to give it some dimension. So by applying that drop shadow, essentially, you get some dimension to that to that design, which I think is really cool. It's already looking really good. And most people say, oh, this is good, we're done. Yeah, you can say yeah, you can say it's it's done, but I think you can take it a, take it a step further. So we're gonna do a couple of things to kind of liven up this or just experiment to see what we get. So the first thing we're gonna do, um, we're gonna duplicate this top layer. So now we have two clipping masks that live within one graphic. Um, but we're gonna just manipulate the top clipping mask, not the second, or not the bottom one. Um, so by doing that, we're just gonna use our blends. So we're gonna kind of blend, uh, using our different blend options, we're gonna see what type of colors we can get, any color saturations, anything like that. See like, you can tell the subtle shifts in color and intensity and saturation just by me scrolling through these blends. Um, overlay is nice, it's a very subtle pop of color but it's not too much compared to vivid light where it's a little bit more extreme, that yellow and that orange pops a little more. So it just really depends on how you want to do it. Um, I'm just going to stick with overlay because it's a pretty good balance. So boom, I'm going to do overlay property and then we're going to take it a step further. So then we're going to go to our adjustment properties and we're going to go to where are you, where are you, half tones. Now half tones, you typically see this in pop art, comic books, you know, it kind of gives like this dotted texture, dotted effect. And I love half tones. So we're gonna stick with a full color halftone and we're just gonna go from left to right. And at first you may not see the effects happening, but as you go further and further along your screen, you'll start to see that halftone pop. And now we're slowly starting to see that. And now what this does, it gives this Nike look like this retro feel. And I think applying textures and stuff can really separate the initial idea of what you're thinking and just giving it more an exploratory phase. So, boom. Now you have this cool half tone. You got your colors, you got your drop shadow. And, you know, it looks pretty solid. We can say this is a wrap, um, but I feel like this, there's more we can do, to be honest. All right. Um, so now, uh, the last little bit we're gonna do here is add that depth. Um, a little bit of depth, a little bit of range. Um, give it a more of a three-dimensional look. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a clipping mask to, of course, the other clipping mask. Like I said, everything is only gonna be affected within the graphic, not anything on the outside of the white. So then I'm gonna go here, go to black. Then we're gonna go to our airbrush. Do our soft brush, uh, probably bring it up to like 15%. 15, yeah, 15%, let's do that. And then we're gonna zoom in just a tad bit. So you can kind of see. And I'm just gonna apply, I'm just gonna apply that that airbrush below the swoosh, and you should see some sort of drop shadow play within that graphic. So I'm applying, I'm applying. can kind of tell that's working in there. Now if it's too much, you can always drop the opacity or you can just redo it. So instead of overdo instead of redoing, I'm just gonna drop that opacity just a tad bit to kind of give it some dimension. Perfect. So now you get more of a 3D effect. Cool. And you always want to go in and you can add the same type of textures and effects within your your letters. So oops, I'm gonna go in and just apply a subtle drop shadow. Subtle drop shadow here. There. too high, too much. All right, let me rethink. All right, let's go in there. 
なるほどね。どうしたろうな、ティーナッシュ。これでバイト。なんてのオーバーでタープ。ボーン、パーフェクト。Now you have some dimension in your work, and that's the goal. Alright, one last thing. We're gonna add a little bit of highlight. So we're gonna do clipping mask again, add some highlights. We're gonna put white in there. We're just gonna just subtle round it off. Go to multiply, go to darken. You can use these properties. You can do a color burn, and that gives it a different type of dimension, which I think is nice. See now that. It's still dimensional, but it has like a, a orange's drop shadow. So yeah, there you have it. It's a Nike retro marble looking design that you can try and procreate.